Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook Live, that's where it started. And if you're watching it on YouTube, this is the replay. Of course, it could be a replay on Facebook Live, too. <laughs> Facebook too. <coughs> and at some point in time, it may even be a podcast. We'll see. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So before I jump in to the topic and get going with that, let me start with introducing myself and what these talks are about as a theme. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And as every day has happened, it's been over a year's worth. That's why today's is number 382. I am keeping track. Um, and today's topic is... <coughs> excuse me. Something in my throat. Um, today's topic is... Um, who told you to settle? Now, I'm speaking specifically, I'll get that word out eventually, about relationship, although this can apply to any area of life business, money, housing, location, car, education, any of that stuff could be under the same heading of who told you, who said you had to settle. Because, as I said in the title, they lied to you. And so I want to tell you some insights and some suggestions and some messages of clarity to see if you get some to give you some idea of what you're going to do instead fair enough i mean it ain't cost you anything so it should be worth it <laughs> so let's look to, i'm going to stick to the area of relationship first because that's the most prevalent one it's the one i talk about most is the area i focus on my clients i work with um but this particular topic just came up conversation with a client um, earlier today and i talked about settling months ago now, I don't remember what it was, so it was good to revisit it, but also to talk it as an overarching theme, because I didn't talk about it this way before, so this is to face the demon of settling and clear it up so you don't have to deal with it anymore. Well, we'll see what happens, I'm not promising that's a guarantee, but you know, <laughs> I'm going to talk about it anyway. So, um, in, the area, in the area, in the topic, or under the topic of relationship, um, First of all, people say, you know, well, you've got to settle down. You know, finally, you can't have, you can't have your, your life of running around being a single person, messing around, having fun. You actually have to get settled down once, once, once finally in a relationship. So, <clears throat> first of all, that's an inaccurate statement. Um, secondly, well, I'm going to play with it a little bit to give you some clarity. And, play, and secondly, um, to settle for less than you deserve is a waste of time. If you deserve better than you're settling for, why do you settle? I mean, that's quite obvious. So I'm going to break that down a bit more and give you some encouraging words, at least, to say that, to get you started. All right, so, first of all, the settling down, like settle down um, phrase that's used a lot when it comes to relationship. You know, you're going to get married, have kids, settle down, get a house, settle like that. And that was thrown right in the middle, like, have all these things, then settle down. That isn't very positive, and it's certainly not what I would call um, inspiring, energizing, uplifting, positive, any of that stuff. Settling down means you're going to be stuck. And the one reason I think there's a lot of problems with marriages nowadays is because people think they've got to settle down and be stuck and be con constrained and confined to a fixed and limited life. And if you've been watching my broadcasts, you know, you know when I do a broadcast, I'm not talking about settling for anything. I'm talking about expansive, growing, positive, inspiring relationships that take you beyond your possible, beyond any way you've been before, to explore your greatest possibilities. Sounds fancy, but it's what I mean. So settling down is the antithesis of that. Let me to put it bluntly. And in the context of relationship, you may have. Oh, well, that's interesting. Okay, I'll come to that. I'll come back to that one in a second. You may have been told by someone that you need to settle down, or you may have observed what you perceived was settling and thought you couldn't do any better. For example, when you're a child, you look at your parents' relationship, or your grandparents' relationship, or your aunts and uncles, or your older siblings. Usually parents is the primary one, but any one of those will count. And if you look at their relationship and you feel like they didn't do the best they could in terms of their partnership. Now, I'm going to be careful how I say this. I don't want to judge anybody's parents. I don't intend to put it that way. But I wanted to give you the idea of thinking about the way your parents' relationship was, as the example, where there were things about it you didn't want, you don't want. 
but you resign yourself thinking you must put up with that because what your parents did feels to you like they had to settle had to settle and not go for their dreams oh, okay I need to talk about that okay a little self a little self exposure for a second um, my parents just speak about them I've talked about them before in, in my uh, talks about the relationship is very loving it's also very um, um, non-argumentative it was peaceful in a lot of ways but one of the things that my looking back in history talking about settling in a way a condition of physical experience and work my dad went through when he was before he got drafted in the war and he got drafted late in the second world war because he wasn't old enough until 1944 I think he was actually in architecture school he was trained to be an architect which is a very high paying job in England when he came back from the war he actually got deep in uh, 1948 which was after he was in Southeast Asia um, there were no right then basically after, let me say this after the war was over same as in America there was this massive push to rebuild and in England especially because England got bombed America didn't at least not apart from Pearl Harbor I mean, just to be clear but in England there was a lot of rebuilding that happened after the war and what they needed wasn't architects it was production line workers and so my dad went back to work as a working class employee at a production line rather than finish his degree in architecture and he never went back so in a way he settled in his career and it was a necessity in a way for what was happening in the world but he never went back to it now would he have met my mother if he had not if he had gone back to architecture school way back after the war, if he hadn't gone to what he'd done, I don't know. I presume he met them, they met because of what he was doing then. So I wouldn't complain about that because I wouldn't be here otherwise. <laughs> but what I would talk about in terms of my own parents' relationship is the model they taught me was somewhat limiting for me. It was a very stable house, very loving family. Um, and my brother and I had different experiences, I know, so I'm not speaking how my brother would speak necessarily, but my experience was that I was pushed to succeed but not necessarily as big as it could have been I actually had um, I mean I, I went I started college um, before, I, before I went to work in, in computers and I had different experiences along the way but the thing was I wasn't like I was the first one to go to to get a degree and then get a master's degree after that which my family never had before so I exceeded the framework of what my parents had laid out but during that time I was at home and I'm being from, I'm losing a whole lot of exposure here, so bear with me. Um, I wasn't thrilled, and I'm going to be careful I'm phrasing this, with the way my parents' relationship was. And it was, again, it was a loving, happy, loving relationship. But the quality that was missing for me was the um, growth and expansion. Now, <laughs> to say this, this is hindsight. At the time, I had no clue. But looking back from now, especially after having 30 years of being in my personal growth journey and spiritual path and everything I've been unfolding, I, d I look back and go, yeah, I see how that was limited. Now, I have now chosen to live a different life than that, so I, I have exceeded that framework, as it were. You know, living in a whole other continent and doing a whole different thing, that if I'd stayed where I was, which a lot of my fellow peers at school were doing, a lot of them never left home. I mean, they, they got married and settled down within three or four miles of where they were born. That wasn't my style. It wasn't my approach, and I, and I left that. I didn't know at the time I was doing that. I just was feeling pulled to do something different, and I went through this path to where I am now, you know, and had several careers along the way. So I've had this experience of breaking through that upper limit of what I thought was settling without even knowing it at the time. So let me talk about you now. <laughs> this is to expose myself more than I planned to. You may have been raised in a family where you saw your parents, similar perhaps to mine, where the life they led wasn't necessarily what you wanted, but maybe you thought you couldn't do more than or better than. Either one, because you didn't think it was possible, or two, because you didn't want to feel like you might upset or shame them by doing better than they did. That wasn't one of my rules about my dad. That's actually from that, actually I learned through David Data's work in uh, one of his books, talks about we, we, all right, I'll put the speaks in. In David Ada's book, The Way of Superior Man, one of the chapters talks about how, um, for us men, it's hard for us to, it's like, how does he say it? Um, it's either come out from or it's hard to come out from our father's shadow. So us men 
have this, for many of us, have an unwritten rule inside that tells us that if we do better than our dad did, we'll shame him. And so we shouldn't do it. That's a settling thing. Now, women, I don't know if you have that same thing with mothers. I don't think you do. But in terms of relationship paradigm, for most men and women, the, your model of relationship is usually from your parents. So if your parents were divorced when you were young, that may be what you think is your future. I mean, it's wired in that way, and it's about wiring yesterday, um, where you're going to start um, expressing and experiencing what happened when you were a child with your parents in your adult life and your relationships, so that's one part of it. The second part is the settling... Um, <laughs> The blanket of settlement that comes over you is imp imprinted or implanted from your parents. It's way, the way that works. So whoever it was that told you that, either they told you or they, actually, I should say this way, either they told you or they demonstrated it to you, as your parents may have done without realizing it, because their parents didn't consciously teach us these things, just the way they were in life. Then you may have taken on the belief that settling was the only way to have a relationship. And I'm here to tell you, they lied to you. They may have modeled that by doing what they did, but you don't have to agree to that. In fact, in fact, you can have the most amazing, fulfilling relationship that you've ever dreamed of if you really want to put your heart into it. But first of all, you've got to clear out that belief of limitation that you're running, that settlement, that settling belief that's still running around inside. The second part of that also is to really get clear about what you really want. Now, what I'm speaking about here is you can't all go for George Clooney, <laughs> just to be clear. So all the women lining up to go, I want to go to George, Clo George Clooney, that's not appropriate. First of all, he's already married. But secondly, it's not about giving somebody, you're not identifying that person. You're identifying somebody of the quality of that person. So if you want somebody who's like him, who's caring, compassionate, does really well in his life, that sort of thing, you can use those qualities. Absolutely you can. But don't necessarily identify a person as the one you want to have. So if you're in a relationship that you want to make better, I wouldn't use this tool for that. It wouldn't work. If you're, um, if there was somebody you dated a while back who you wish was the one you wanted to be with, but they're now married, they're now going to somebody else. I wouldn't use your witchcraft to bring them back in again. That wouldn't be appropriate either. I get my point. So you're raising the standards of what you want in a relationship, which you can do because you don't have to settle. Is a really your description, your. Um, intention and your vision of what sort of relationship you want to be in how are you with your partner how is he with you for the women that is and and for men and women you can go around too so men can talk about women in the same way so what's she like for you so getting clarity about what it is you really want getting clear about what it is you really um, desire and getting clear about the qualities and experiences you want to have in that relationship is the fundamental, fundamental um, platform which you can build your vision. And that will make everything work. I'm surprised I haven't got any comments yet. I was surprised. I thought there were a lot of comments because people would be going, yeah, but, yeah, but. Well, maybe you just all believe me, which is great. <laughs> so um, this is. Um, oops. My screen. I was trying to get my screen to brighten up on me. So this is this is basically the lesson I want to add to you or inspire you with, is that you can have whatever you want. I didn't say you can have who you, whoever you want. Again, I want to be clear about that. What I'm saying is that you can have a relationship that's way beyond what you thought might be settling. And again, if you felt like you couldn't have the most amazing, dynamic, powerful, fulfilling, expressive relationship because you had to settle for something less than that because the way you were programmed stop believing the false net, that, that lie it's not true and I know some people watching who they've hit up against that one and they've exceeded it which is amazing I love that but I want to make sure the message is out there for those people who are facing that dilemma of thinking they have to settle with somebody less than they can have because I don't think they're worthy of having it oh that's the other piece thank you that was the other piece I was waiting for who's the other piece you may believe you may believe that you are not worthy of having that amazing relationship and I understand. I appreciate how you feel. I've been there. But again, like the settling in uh, instruction that you were learnt, you either were given or demonstrated to you, it's a lie as well. 
A simple principle I can give you, which is one of the things I learned from my spiritual studies, is that who we are, and I'm going to get spiritual on you, so bear with me, who we are is a divine expression of spirit. Yes, I'm being spiritual with you. In fact, one of my programs I was in talks about how we're spiritual beings having human experience. Well, if we're spiritual beings having a human experience, then we're all divine beings. There is no unworthiness when you're a divine being. So if you're in the human expression, remember where you come from. I don't mean your parents, I mean <laughs> divinity-wise. And by knowing that and by owning that space, and even if you don't believe in God, I'm talking about that. I'm talking about owning the fact that if you believe, well, if you actually, if you're an atheist, it wouldn't work, but if you believe and you understand that your beingness inside is as good as everybody else, where everyone's all the same, thank you for the love, I appreciate that, um, then there is no unworthiness. Unworthiness usually comes from imprinted beliefs that we don't deserve things, or being in... Um, um, harassed, no, that's not the word, word. Um, influenced by somebody else's opinion that you don't deserve, which is also not true. Unworthiness is not yours to own. Sorry, you can't have it. <laughs> you are worthy. Period. So, again, like the settling, it's a false belief that if you're being, unworthy, being unworthy is true. It's not. So, a deserving relationship is absolutely within your grasp, it's within your range, it's within your possibility. All we need to do is start raising your standards. Start raising the qualities of what you want. Start writing down what you believe. So you're not going to settle for a drunk or a, a cheater or a, a workaholic or an abuser. None of that has to be in your life. Even if you experienced it before, even if you watched your parents go through that, you deserve the best in relationship. You can have the best in relationship. You do not have to settle. I think I've belabored the point long enough. If this makes sense, I appreciate you know, give me some thumbs up, but also if, I, if it makes sense to you, practice this. In fact, let me give you some homework, which I always give anyway. Okay, here we go. So look at your past relationships. Last one if you want, last three or four. If, and this is for you if you're single, my friend, by the way. I'm looking, this is for you if you're looking to create a new relationship and you haven't done that yet. Look at your past relationships. And look and see if you felt like looking back in from hindsight, 2020 hindsight, looking back and seeing your past relationships and seeing where you actually settled for less than you thought you deserved. And maybe you settled because you thought you couldn't have any better, which is what mostly drives that program. And it is a program, by the way. That's a wiring inside. It talked about, talk about wiring yesterday. By the way, if you didn't see my broadcast yesterday, watch it. <laughs> I talked about the wiring. Yes, um, I think it was yesterday. If not, it was on Saturday. But definitely watch those broadcasts. They were informative. Um, so secondly, when you see those past relationships through that lens and you start to look at things, and if they do line up as being less than you deserve, first of all, notice the fact that you do deserve more. Because if they look like they're less than you deserve, it implies or actually it makes it clear that in fact you do deserve better because you realize that is less than you deserve. You know, it makes sense. That's kind of logical, I know. <laughs> so... Your homework is to look at past relationships, singular, multiple relationships. See where you settle for less than you deserve. And then start building your vision, your intention, even your list, or you want a relationship that is up to the level of what you deserve. That's your homework. Now, if you want to find out more to do this, if you're a woman, I have a program that I was talking about to a client this morning about this because this is why it's on my radar. Um, I have a program called Attract the Man You Want. The key phrase is, the man you want, not the one you settle for, <laughs> the man you want. That program's designed for you if that's what helps you. So if you want to find out more about that and more about my work, um, yeah, take this action step. On my website, barrysilver.com, on the left-hand side, it has a little, in the, med in the menu across the top, it has Let's Chat. Click on that, sign up for this conversation, and we'll talk, I'll tell you about the program, and I'll find out where you are and what you're looking for, and I will remind you where you've been settling and you can deserve better. That's my gift to you. Yes, it does sound like berating, but it's not. It's, it's actually loving you. So it'll, it'll help you from moving forward to where you want to go. So that's my gift to you. It's a 30-minute conversation. Um, I call you, we talk, and I'll let you know what I can offer if it can help you. And by the end of it, hopefully you've got some clarity. My gift to you. Fair enough. 
Also, this is my daily broadcast, as I mentioned at the beginning. Number 383? 381, I forgot which track it was. <laughs> I've been talking so much I forgot the number. Oh well, you'll see it in the title anyway. This and all my other broadcasts is on my business is on my personal page where I share it normally. It's also gonna be on my business page on Facebook where they accumulate. Because there's less other stuff on that page, except on my personal page is more stuff. So on Facebook, go to Barry Selby the author. Also, this get posted on YouTube, so my YouTube channel is Barry Selby, my playlist is Messages of the Masculine, and also on my website again, BarrySelby.com. That's okay, Jermaine. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for the love, and I'm glad you got here anyway. Um, just you need to back on track. So, <laughs> all of these talks are um, stored there, and also on my website is where my book and my program are as well. And, oh, that's, that's right. These talks are on my video blog on my website. That's what I'm going to say. Yes, I appreciate you catching the replay. Um, and again, this will be on YouTube as well. And I am planning now, I think it's finally time, as soon as I've got almost 400 of these, that I put together a podcast because a lot of friends of mine want to listen to my broadcast when they can't watch them when they're driving or cycling or whatever they're doing. So that's coming as well. So if you have any questions, reach out to me. If you have any people who think you should watch this, please share it with them. Uh, thank you for being with me as always. Uh, take care of yourself. Oh, by the way, in about 40 minutes at 6 p.m. Pacific time, I think it's going to be broadcast. I'm going to be doing a dual broadcast on Facebook Live, I think, and on Instagram as well. I'm not sure how it's being done. My friend's running it. But I'm doing a joint broadcast with a friend, Sarah. We're talking about celibacy. So stay tuned around 6 p.m. Pacific time on my page. You should see it there. If it's not, it's going to be recorded and played later, so I don't know what's happening yet. But just in case it's live and you can interact, keep an eye on my page at 6 p.m. <laughs> Pacific time today. Um, that's in about 40 minutes. With that, thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me as always. If you have any questions, comments, please share below um, on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're watching this. And I give you homework, of course. And with that, I wish you well. Take care of yourselves. You, deserve, you do deserve the best. No settling required. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. I appreciate the love. Bye.